Hey, Travis, you ready for the Kids Corner? How does one get ready for listening to the radio? I don't know. I guess it's different for everyone. Well, I'm always ready to listen to the Kids Corner, Joel. Good. It's starting now. This sure isn't the way uh, we formed in England or the Netherlands. Ugh. Do you think Master Squanto knows what he's doing, Brother Reuben? I mean, these gardens look like nothing I've ever seen. Who grows food in piles like this? Maybe because his people don't have horses or oxen to pull plows, they'd figure out a different way to grow crops. Wait, they don't have horses? What about the movies? The what? You know, westerns and stuff. Uh, do you need to sit down for a while, Sister Chelsea? You're not making much sense. Maybe. Taking a break, you two? Good day, Brother Jacobs. What have you there? Something Master Squanto said we should bury along with seeds for the harvest. Codfish? Is this a joke? Sister Olivia's right. You can't plant fish and expect them to grow into... Corn on the cod? He says that he learned it from the monks in Europe. Wait, Squanto's been to Europe too? I thought he was from here. How did he go there? You'll have to ask him yourself. God gave us a great gift when he sent us Master Squanto. He has taught us where to fish, where to find the best wood for building our homes. So when he tells us to plant fish with our seeds, I will listen. But it's so different than what we did back home. It's worth a shot. After all, we pilgrims went hungry when we tried it our own way last year. It seems we have a lot to learn from our new neighbors. Well, if we're going to plant some fish, we'd better get to it. Can we listen to the radio while we work? The what? She's been talking a little crazy this morning. Just play along. All right. We can't feed ourselves through the winter. Hello, pilgrims! We have food! We're saved! Hey, Livia, what's going on? Oh, uh, hey, Reuben. I was just playing with the Thanksgiving decorations. Chelsea and I are helping Mr. Jacobs set up for the Community Center Charity Dinner on Wednesday. You want to help? Sure, I guess. So what is a charity dinner? It's where people come and eat a meal and then donate money to help people in need. It's looking good out there, girls. What do you think, Reuben? Yeah, though I'm still confused what it's all about. I just told you! It's a dinner to raise money to help people in need. Yeah, I got that part. But what does that have to do with Thanksgiving? Everything, actually. The first Thanksgiving was celebrated because the American Indians saw that their new neighbors needed help. And when they did help them, the pilgrims could not only survive through the winter, but they had enough to throw a feast in gratitude as well. I hadn't thought of it like that. Me neither. I just thought it was when they got together to eat turkey. Yeah, I guess it's a good lesson for us, huh? What's that, Olivia? How we need to actually help people instead of, I don't know, not? Yeah, it's kind of like the story Jesus told about the Good Samaritan. God wants us to care for others, even if they aren't like us or have treated us badly in the past. That's not easy. I've got to think about that. Want to set out these candles on the tables while you think? Sure. And I'll start up the radio. Mr. Jacobs, does this corn look right? Mm, We might want to go with three or four ears per table, Olivia. Uh, That's a bit much. Oh, okay. I just had a lot left over. Do you want me to put them in the storage room? I think the tables in the front could use some decoration. You could put them out there. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll go do that. Hey, Mr. Jacobs, I have a question. Okay, Chelsea, is there not enough paper napkins? I can pick up some on Monday if we need to. It's not about the dinner. I was just thinking about what we were talking about earlier. You know, how the Indians helped the pilgrims. I was just wondering why did the pilgrims need help? Didn't they already know how to farm and fish and stuff? Mm, I'm not sure if they did or not. But winters in most of Europe aren't as harsh or as long as the ones here in America. And assuming the pilgrims did know how to hunt, farm, and fish, they didn't know where the best places were for those kinds of things. Nothing about this new land was familiar. And because they didn't know how to get food here, many starved until Squanto and others came and showed them. Oh, okay. That makes sense. 
Um, since we're asking questions, I have one too, if that's all right. Sure, Ruben. What's on your mind? I've been thinking about what you said about how we need to show kindness to people who need help, because that's what living for God looks like. Yep. Well, since I've started hanging out here and at your garage, I've been trying really hard to learn what God wants me to do, and then, you know, doing it. And how's that turned out? Not good. Just when I think I'm being patient, I realize I'm not being kind. Or maybe I'm not trusting God enough. It just seems to... (laughs) to be impossible. You're right. It does seem to be impossible. As humans, we do have the ability to do good things. And for some, it comes more naturally. But as God tells us in Romans 3.23, the truth is, everyone messes up no matter how hard we try. Then what do we do? (laughs) Like the pilgrims in the story we've been talking about, God has sent us a helper that... You know what? I just remembered a drama script I have that explains. Mind if I go print it out? I don't mind. I'll be right back then. And we'll listen to the radio. And now, from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the empowering drama, The Workout Omatic, an adapted biblical teaching about virtue. Once upon a time, there was a gym instructor. Hi, Gemma is the name fitness is the game. Go ahead and get your mats out and let's burn some carbs. Every Tuesday and Friday evening, she would run classes for all kinds of exercises, and her students looked forward to each and every one of them. I love coming in and getting my heart pumping. Gemma's the best. Yeah, her classes are the best. I wouldn't miss a single one. Well, maybe leg day. Oh no, leg day is the best day. Got to turn those glutes. Come on, people, let's get some burpees in before we hit the chin-up bar. One day, Gemma had an announcement for her students that made them all rather sad. All right, class, good work today. Before you go, I need to tell you some exciting news. Exciting news? I'm confused. Didn't the narrator just say that this was going to make us sad? Well, yes, but it's also exciting. See, my dad and I are starting work on our new gym facility downtown. It's going to be so much better than our space here, and you're going to love it. I'm talking a pool, weight rooms, treadmills, punching bags, basketball courts, the works. So, what's the sad part? Well, seeing as I'll be busy working on the new gym, I won't be able to run classes here during the week. What? But, how are we going to stay in shape? How are we going to feel the burn? Calm down, calm down. I've thought about that, and to keep you on track, I've taken the liberty of ordering you all each a workout o Ooh! This state-of-the-art contraption of my own design is going to power up your workouts 20-fold. Each day is a different experience, from cardio to curls, crunches to calisthenics. Next time I see you, I might not even recognize you. And so, after a few weeks, Gemma bid her students goodbye, and true to her word, ten days after that, each of her students received their very own workout o Awesome! I mean, it's not like having Gemma right here, but having this is still really cool. Months went by and the students awaited the opening of the new gym. And just when it seemed like it might not ever open... We're back, baby! Yes, it's about time. Hey, Gemma, check out these pythons. Whoa, sick games, girl. Thanks. I've been using the workout o every day, and it's changed my life. That's what I like to hear. Let's get started. Did you use the workout o Eh, when I felt like it. But when I didn't see any results, I figured I'd just wait until the new gym opened. Uh, boy, we've got some work to do. The moral is... God has given His Spirit to us to help us live holy lives. Through His power, we can have love, self-control, and peace that is beyond human understanding. But it's not something that just happens. You have to actually listen to the Spirit and let it work in your life. Because if you keep living for yourself, you won't be seeing the results God wants for you. Wow, it's looking good in here. Yeah, I especially like the red and orange tablecloths on the table. It looks like the dining hall is a lawn full of bright fall leaves. So pretty. It does look good in here. 
Thanks to you kids, I feel like the charity dinner will be a big success. Well, you know, we're all about quality. So, what was that drama script about? You were in it, Olivia. What do you mean, what was it about? Well, usually we only do drama scripts when they have something to do with a question someone had. So I'm asking, what was the question? Oh, Reuben was asking Mr. Jacobs about how we can live good and godly lives. Because, let's face it, we're not good at it. Gotcha, so that's why God gave us the Holy Spirit. Makes sense. Yeah. You look like you still have a question about this, Reuben. Yeah, well, I get what the script was saying, and I wasn't confused. But I've heard you tell us kids all of that before. You know, let God's Spirit work in us, let it help us. But what does that even mean? God's like the most powerful thing there is. How could I stop him from doing anything? Oh, yeah. Good question. It is a good question, isn't it, Chelsea? I struggle to understand this myself. But you've got an answer for us, right? <laughs> well, I'll do my best. The first thing to make clear is, if you believe that Jesus is God and he rose from the dead, he has given you his spirit. It's not something you earn. It's not something that only special Christians get. If you believe, you have it. Okay, but I still mess up. So does that mean I'm not believing enough? No. Like I said, you don't earn the Holy Spirit. But God tells us in Thessalonians 5.19, we can stop the Spirit from helping us. But how? There's a lot of ways. But I think the most common way is what we talked about in the drama. We have the Spirit, but we don't feel like using it. We let our own thoughts, emotions, and cares control how we act. And that's when we start messing up and getting spiritually weak, even though we have God's Spirit right there to help us. So how do we not do that? How do we use God's Spirit? In order to let His power work in our lives, we need to obey Him. In the Bible, we find the stories of Samuel and Isaiah. These two prophets were called by God, and their attitude was, Here I am, Lord. I will do what you say. When we want to be used by God, we need to realize that this means He's the one in charge. After all, how can you follow God's Spirit if you keep going your own way? That's it? We just need to let God be in charge? It's a good place to start. Turning to God for guidance doesn't come naturally. But when you make it a point to pray, learn from His Word, and let Him lead you in the way you should go, the more natural it will become as you grow to be better and better friends. And things like love, patience, self-control, and kindness will start to show up, like it says in Galatians 5. I'm still growing in this myself, but because of God's help, I can safely say my life has been changed. That's a lot to think about, and I'll have to talk to my parents about it, but thanks for explaining, Mr. Jacobs. My pleasure, Chelsea, and thank you kids for all the hard work. What can I say? We're pretty great. <laughs> all right, you guys. I've got to head out and lock up. See you next week. Oh, Mr. Jacobs, don't forget your radio. Oh, okay, thanks. Want to put it in my truck? My hands are a little full. Yeah, let me unplug it first. 